Hello everyone, it's Shane Conto, your Wasteland reviewer, and welcome to Wasteland Talks, my talk show where I talk about whatever the hell I want. And this time we're having Dave and my brother Ethan back again to talk some more baseball, because my God, we're four months into the season, and we only have two left, and things are getting crazy. Dave, Ethan, thank you both for coming on. Thanks for having us back. Thanks for having me. So I figured we get things started kind of throwing around some of the surprises around these parts. What are some of the biggest surprises the past two months of the season since we talked last? Well, I think one of the biggest ones we would all agree with is the sudden emergence of the Phillies. <laughs> yeah. They were pretty much dead without Bryce Harper months ago. <laughs> Yeah, without Bryce Harper. And now they have the best record in baseball since June 1st. Yep. They are raking. And they have by far the easiest schedule at any playoff contender. And they should really take advantage of that. I think they have 28 of their next 35 games against losing teams. So, like... Yeah. And in, in the past, the Phillies have had a problem with that. Yes. Which is interesting. Beating te teams they shouldn't beat and lo losing to the teams that they should just demolish. They really should have won that three-game series against the Cubs, but then they made up for it by absolutely demolishing the Nationals. That was, that was a joke. 14 home runs in four <laughs> games. Um, I think one of my biggest surprises right now is quite is nice. how hard of a brick wall the Yankees ran into. They hit 70 wins and then haven't done anything since. Yeah. That series with the Cardinals. They got rid of Joey Gallo. <laughs> That's what it was. Apparently. And they just lost Carpenter. Yeah. Yeah, I just oh, dropped him right. from my fantasy team because he's definitely not going to be back in time to make a difference. Um, but, yeah, Mon uh, Montas did not pitch well his first start. Um, Luis Castillo, who they were hoping to get, beat them when they were facing Seattle. And then, yeah, the Cardinals just demolished them. And that's another surprise for me is the Brewers – kind of spiraling. Yeah. Because Cardinals have come on strong and took that division back. And not only that, if the season ended today, the Brewers wouldn't even be in the playoffs. Which... Yeah, they're a game back in the wild card. For yeah. Third spot. Behind the San Diego Padres, the world's greatest team, who then got punched in the nuts by the Dodgers over the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, the, all those pitchers, good luck. Well, if I just you... saw a stat about that. Uh huh. That they, their average and hits and like extra base hits are like 30th in the league since they got one Soto. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know one of those was a grand slam by Brandon Drury because he's on my fantasy team. Um, but I'm just looking at it. So all the division leaders in the National League, past 10 games, Dodgers 9-1, and one, Mets 8-2, and two, Cardinals 9-1. and one. And then the Phillies 9-1. and one. And then the whole rest of the National League, except for Cincinnati, have losing records the past, like, 10 games. <laughs> So, the whole National League is stinking up a storm except for four teams. <laughs> so, that's interesting. And then... Sounds about right, because if you look at the divisions except the NL East. Yeah. And I don't think you could say... And the I think the biggest surprise to anybody and this is going to make Ethan really happy, is the fact that the Baltimore Orioles are 57 and 52 and one game out of the playoffs. Even Ow. after trading guys so, away, they're still doing it, well. It is, it is recorded. 
our fir- our first conversation about the pre the before the season started. They're going to surprise people. Yeah, <laughs> but I am Orioles. surprised how much they are competing right now. Even if they don't wind up making the playoffs, what they did this year is already like I'm president because I, like I said before, and I'm pretty sure each video that we've done, it's like they're going to surprise people. But I think it's even – they went above and beyond any kind of expectation. Mm-hmm. They had – um you know, journalists, like, I was so wrong about, about this. <laughs> like, you sure were. So, and they're, and they're doing whatever they can to, I know I taught, I, when we go through our, um, Instagram, uh, group chat, that, that this team is the Cleveland Indians in major league. Because it really is like it's a family-owned company, <laughs> uh, uh, franchise. The kids are getting control of it. The one, the one son wants all the control and allegedly wanted to move, wants to move them out of Baltimore. He gets rid of their their ace closer, the only their lone All Star this year. They get he gets rid of a staple, a guy that like is the fan favorite in Baltimore. Like, you can probably ask anybody that's an Orioles fan, who's your favorite player? And it's, like, probably 99%. They're going to say Trey Manstein. And it was, like, a slap in the face to Orioles fans. And you know what they did? They took off even more because, like, screw we're you. Win we're going to do harder. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So as of right now, the Orioles are the only team in the American League with seven wins in their last 10 games. And they're the fifth best team in the past 10 days in Major League Baseball. So it says a lot. Now, getting to. They're raking too. They're hitting dingers. Mm-hmm. They're doing really well. They're beating the Blue Jays right now. They're currently in a rain delay. Did they make it to the fifth? <laughs> like the Phillies did? <laughs> that rain delay. Oh, the, that, hey, man. A win's a win. Don't care. Sixth Seriously, inning. Though. They're in the sixth inning. There you go. So, if they call it, they win. It's a fish owl. <laughs> so let's get to divisions. So, right now, we got the AL East, which right now the Yankees are 71-39 and in first place and have a 10-and-a-half game lead on Toronto, 12 on Tampa, 13-and-a-half on Baltimore, 17 on Boston. Another big surprise who rose back up again and then completely tanked. So, is anybody catching the Yankees for the division? Yes. Cool. Who's catching the Yankees for the division? Yes. <laughs> Every person on this planet is going to think I'm out of my friggin' mind. <laughs> but the Blue Jays have been shit all year and underperforming. And the Yankees, albeit they're the Yankees, they are overachieving. Okay? Something's going to break. And I, I, I see a catastrophic meltdown with the Yankees. And I think the Blue Jays are going to catch lightning in a bottle at some point and at least make it interesting. So we got one Blue Jays. How about you, Dave? Because they have way too much talent, <laughs> way too much talent to be doing what they're doing right now. Very true. I think the Yankees are starting to show some cracks in the armor, but I do think like at the same time, it's so late in the season that even if they do start to like play worse than what they've been doing, 
I still think they created enough of a lead that even if it shrinks, they'll still be able to hold on to it. You know, of all the teams that could um, surpass them, I think the Blue Jays definitely do have the best shot at it. I think both of those teams have potential to do some damage in the postseason. But I do think the Yankees will still manage to hang on. Yeah, I think the Yankees are still going to win the division. I just want to be able to tell Joe I told him. So. <laughs> We're referencing my mom's boyfriend, who is a <laughs> Yankees fan. Um, just throwing this out there, don't forget about Tampa. And Oh, I'm not. They're just chilling there completely under the radar, yet the fact that they're in the playoffs right now. Um, I do think the Yankees are going to hold on to it, but I don't think they're going to keep that big of a lead, especially the way that they're playing lately. Um, I think all their flaws are really showing right now, and they're starting to get hurt, and their bullpen that was supposed to be a big strength of theirs is not performing. Uh, And really their offense is – if Rizzo, Stanton, and Aaron Jones get hot, they do well. If not, then not so much. AL Central. But who are the two players that keep getting hurt on the Yankees every year? Judge and Stanton. So, mm-hmm. we'll if see. that happens, if Judge is like, if something happens, the Judge. They're done. The, their goose is cooked. They're out of here. They're done. Guaranteed. We they, shall, we they shall see. They're here first. <laughs> we shall see. Baseball's crazy. Ethan has very strong feelings about the AL East. Now, probably the most interesting division, shockingly, in all of baseball is the AL Central. Because the Twins are 57 and 51, which put in perspective, they have a half game better record than the Orioles, and they have first place. (laughs) And then Cleveland's one back, Chicago White Sox are two and a half back, and they're actually over 500 again. And then the Royals are 13, and then the Tigers are 15. So who's winning this one? Dave, who do you think? I think last time we did this video, I went with the Twins. I think I'm still going to stick with them. But, I mean, realistically, any one of those three teams has a decent shot. I I think – I don't think it's going to be the White Sox. I I feel like they've regressed this year a lot more than I expected, especially considering how dominant they were for that division last season. Mm Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like they just have too many problems right now. Um, Cleveland, I, I do like, um, I guess I'm a bit biased towards them because of Jose Ramirez. I always pick him up on my fantasy team and he <laughs> does work. So I, I think they, they also have a pretty good shot, but I'm still going to stick with the Twins for now. I think for me right now, I think the Indians are going to take this one. Because, like, I know in going into the season, the White Sox were the favorites. They won last year, right? And mm-hmm. they went down the toilet for most of the season. And it, they've made it interesting getting back into it. But I think Cleveland has some good young players. They have, like, McKenzie, one of their starters. Because, like, they have McKenzie, they have Shane Bieber. Like, just imagine if they still had Clevenger. Um, who... Like, look at the Padres. They have- Is it like a 4.6 ERA, though? Yeah. So, but... I'm just singled. Um, In terms of... I'm going to go with Cleveland for this one. How about you, Ethan? I'm going to go with Cleveland. Um, I just think they have, overall, the best team to um, get through the rest of the season. Um, with a winning record, and I see, like I was, I was debating. I was looking at um Chicago 
And then I just saw that um, Tim Anderson's out four to six weeks with a torn ligament in his hand after he was suspended <laughs> for uh, bumping a umpire. Um, so they don't have – he's the catalyst to their lineup. And he's out four to six weeks. The season's over. Yeah. And I don't think, like, if he was still in it, I would probably lean towards uh, the White Sox um, streaking. But, and it's not even still, like, out of the realm of possibility because they're two, like, what? Two and a half out. Two and a half games back. Like, the top three teams in that division are, like, so stupid close to each other. And they all suck. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Like, a fourth-place team in the AL East would be pushing for first place in that division. Like, it's just one of those times. It's usually the NL Central that sucks. I mean, the uh, the Central teams. And... Is again. So I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna go with the 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 Guardians because I don't really see the Twins doing a whole lot, and then yeah, they the White Sox got a huge um, bump in the road with Tim Anderson being out. So yeah, I think it's interesting. Like none of those teams really did much, like at the deadline and they're all like we're in a deadlock we're just gonna keep up and oh yeah we're gonna be talking about trade deadline later yeah well, we'll yeah get... let's just suck <laughs> like let's all just limp to the playoffs <laughs> um and then the al west we'll save it's... our wins for the playoffs <laughs> we got houston it's wild, wild west it's a lot less wild than it could have been, um, especially after, you know, the Angels completely imploded. Um, but Houston, we got it 70 and 40. They want the AL number one seed coming at the Yankees. Um, Seattle's 11 and a half games out of first place. Texas is 21. LA's 23. And then Oakland's 29. Um I'm going to say Houston's winning this division. Like, I don't think there's any doubt about that's, it. That's really bad that Oakland's that close. That's – they – That they're that close to L.A. Oh, I thought you meant to the Astros. I'm like, they're 29 games out of first place. Um, no, they're only six games behind. The- oh, I mean, for <laughs> Oakland, that's pretty good. Well, the thing is – they have 41 wins and they're 29 games out of first place. <laughs> Not great. Um, no. But yeah, Houston definitely. And I wouldn't be surprised if they take the number one seed at this point because I don't think the Yankees are going to play extremely well going down the stretch. So I think Houston, them and the damn Dodgers, we'll get to that in a second. Just came to just like, you know what? Everybody's doubting us going into the season. But I picked them at the start because I'm like, I, I don't think they're done. Okay. Ethan, who you have? No question. It's the freaking Astros. As much as it pains me. I want it, though. It, it, it's, it's less painful to admit because I love Trey Mancini. And I want to see him. Possibly go deep into the, the playoffs. So I want to see the Baltimore. I don't want to see those assholes win. Houston. Yo, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel horrible for him because when we get to the trade deadline and stuff, I'll talk about it more. But yeah, there's no, there's no doubt at this point. I know I didn't pick them to win at the beginning. But no, there's just there, – there's no way in hell. <laughs> and look, like, seriously, everybody gets hurt. And even then. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Astros. Hey. How about you, Dave? I think you guys pretty much summed it up. 
this is one of the easiest choices. You know, even though Seattle has gone on a tear, Houston's just so far ahead and they've consistently been good. And at, at this point in the season, I don't see it, anything changing enough to throw them off course. So I think they take the division. Yeah, just to throw this in there, Seattle has a plus 13 run differential. Houston has a hundred plus 126 <laughs> run differential. Wow. <laughs> Insane. Uh, Yankees, okay. Yankees have a plus 206 run differential. That's, that's stupid. Yep. Nationals have a negative 199 run differential. They're pathetic. Just leave the Nationals alone. The Nationals, already, the Nationals are 35 and a half games out of first place with 36 wins. <laughs> That's bad. Speaking of, NL East, we got the Mets 71 and 39 in first. Same record as the Yankees, uh, virtually. And then Atlanta is 7 out. The Phillies are 10 out. <clears throat> Miami's 21 out, and like I said, Washington is 35 and a half games out of first place. Um, so, Ethan, who we have? So, you're saying there's still a chance? No, there's not. Technically, they're not eliminated from playoff contention, I guess. But, no, they definitely don't have a chance. Um, who you going with? All right. I'm going to preface it with this. The Mets are the Mets, Okay. <laughs> And the Braves ain't shit. I know everybody in Atlanta thinks they are, but they're not. When they when the Phillies get Harper back, it's going to get insane. They already have a spark right now. And then they get him back at the end of this month. It's like gloves are off and they're punching. And I know it's a t it's ten, but there's plenty of baseball left. And if they keep up what they're doing right now, the Phillies are going to be in first place. I feel like the Mets have blown worse. Oh, they have. <laughs> Unfortunately for Mets fans, um, how about you, Dave? I would very much like to see that happen. I still feel like. The Mets are going to win the division, especially since it just seems like we've matched up horribly with them so far this season. I expect we'll do a lot better now than we were earlier in the year. But it, it seems like they have a really strong thing going right now, especially after they pretty handily defeated the Braves in that, what was that, a five-game series they just had? Well, they won like four out of five. Four right? out of five, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're still looking pretty strong. I, I think the Phillies still have a, a lot of upside in that they could continue climbing in the rankings. You know, as you've seen, they moved into the third wild card spot. Now they're in the second spot. I, I think there's a very good chance they even take over that first spot. The three games behind the Braves. <laughs> and the Braves are playing it close against Boston tonight. So... I feel like even though the Mets got the best pickup at the trade deadline, which was getting DeGrom back, um, I question him being healthy. I really do. And if he sticks it out the rest of the season healthy and so does Scherzer, that's scary. And I think the Mets can hold on to it. I have a sinking feeling they're going to blow the division to the Braves. And the Phillies and the Mets are going to be around the same in the wild card. I think all three of these teams are going to be in the playoffs. Um, especially with how um, Milwaukee's been spiraling. I think that's the key. If the NL Central teams drop, I think all three of those teams are making the playoffs in the NL East. But I don't know. I don't think the Mets are going to hold on to this. But 
I have a sinking feeling it's going to be the Braves who kind of swoop in. I think it's going to be big depending on when Harper gets back. Like, if he gets back at the very beginning of September, that's a whole month of having Harper with, you know, Castellanos and Real Muto who are actually hitting now. Because, my God, they were two of the biggest disappointments out of anybody this season. Dumps. Yeah. And at anybody, and they are so damn lucky that Schwarber and Reese Hoskins <laughs> have just been demolishing home runs <laughs> because if it wasn't for them, and then Hall honestly has been doing decent at DH. And Segura, I think, Bryson big- Stott. <laughs> yeah, they needed him back. <laughs> Yeah, Segura hit a home run right before we started recording. This this one's going to be – this is a hard yep. decision to call, I think. Um, NL Central. So we got Cardinals in first place at 60 and 48. Milwaukee's two back. Both Chicago and Cincinnati are 16, and the Pirates are 16 and a half games out. So literally all three of those teams are vying for the – third place in the division and who's going to wind up being the worst but Dave who do you think's won in this division uh, in the past when we did these videos I was thinking the Brewers but they just seem so lifeless right now I have to give it to the Cardinals because like they're pretty much on par with where the Phillies are right now and that they fought fire at the right time they're quickly shooting up through the ranks, and I I don't see them cooling off that much. Even if they do, I, I don't really see the Brewers catching fire either. So, so those two factors combined, like Milwaukee just seems like in a dangerous spot right now where I, I don't think they're even going to make it to the postseason unless something big happens. So I'm going to have to say St. Louis. Yeah, I agree. And if you put in perspective the fact that they have two of the top five MVP candidates in the National League as their corner infielders, because between Goldschmidt and Arenado, that's dangerous. Those are some dangerous hitters. And I think the addition of Jose Quintana was really good pickup for the Cardinals. And... They're just fire right now. And Corbin Burns, who's on my fantasy team, seems to keep finding ways to blow leads now. And now I'm getting, like, no points from him. And he's supposed to be the ace of the Brewers. That's not a good look. It's not a good thing. And I think the Cardinals' confidence is skyrocketing after they just whooped the Yankees all weekend. And the Yankees, up until, like, a couple weeks ago, were, like, the team in Major League Baseball, just destroying everybody. And now they're not looking so immortal at this point. Um, How about you, Ethan? Who's winning this division? The Cardinal. That team's too deep. Mm Mm-hmm. To, yeah, yeah, there's. I don't. I don't think. I know it's close right now, but <laughs> after what that showing that they had with the Yankees, it just they're gonna wind up um, pulling away with that, that division. Yeah, like you said, close now. Not gonna be close soon. I don't think. And honestly, this might be the easiest division to get who's going to win, no matter how many moves the San Diego Padres made. And that is the NL West, because the Dodgers are 75 and 33. Uh, San Diego, 16 games out of first place. The Dodgers have the biggest lead in baseball. San Francisco's 21 and a half. The 10 games under 500, Arizona Diamondbacks are 26 games out of first place, and Colorado's 28 and a half games out of first place. This is easy for me. I don't think the Dodgers are going to get beat. 
at this point. And they have a cohesive team, unlike the San Diego Padres, who Manny Machado can't even run after a ball he missed. That that made me mad. That's honestly. embarrassing. That's that's a joke. And you're supposed to be – you're saying you're not worried about the Dodgers. He's Manny, he's Manny fucking Machado. Yeah, we know who you are. You can't run down a ball. So, yeah, Dodgers, easy. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. <clears throat> are you worried about the Dodgers? No, I'm Manny fucking Machado. What does that mean? <laughs> at, this, at this point, I hate them more than the Dodgers right now. And that says a lot because <laughs> I hate the Dodgers. So, Ethan, who do you have? Yeah, it's <laughs> it, it, like there, no, another one that there's no question whatsoever. Yep. It's the freaking Dodgers. But they're the Dodgers, so they're going to get in the playoffs and they're going to freaking lose. So it's fine. Everybody will be happy. Awkward. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, it's the Dodgers. I mean, the, you know, the Padres are making some aggressive moves, but they're just so far out. You know, especially considering that the, they just lost in that series to the Dodgers. They just got swept. Yeah. They were 13 games out. Now they're 16 games <laughs> out. So they're, they're still figuring some things out. And they just lost they just lost one nothing <laughs> to the Giants yesterday. Mm. Like with that offense, how do you get shut out by the Giants, who are one of the biggest underperforming teams this year after how many wins did they have last year? Yeah. I thought for sure that they'd at least be a wild card team this year. Nope. Not looking well, like, like 102, right? They won. Well, they made, they won more than the Dodgers. Yeah. Right? Oh, one of, oh, yeah. It was like 106 or something like that. Yeah. And the Dodgers crazy. had like 104. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out so well for them, though. Um, segwaying into the wild. Yeah, how about that, Kapler? What you doing now? Losing is cool, apparently. So, AL Wild. Okay. We have Toronto, who has a two-game lead. And then Tampa, who has a... So, Toronto has a two-game lead over the bottom wild card spot. Tampa has a half-game lead. And Seattle has the last wild card spot. Then, Baltimore is one game. Cleveland is one and a half games. Chicago is three games. Boston's four and a half games. And Texas is nine and a half. I'm only going to talk about teams within 10 games. So I do think that we could at least say that Texas is not a factor, though, because they tried to make some big moves this offseason. That didn't work out for them at all. Um, so let's make this. Not so much. Besides Texas, who do you think's no chance? of getting in the wild card spots. Because we have seven teams within four. Like, we have the Toronto, we have Toronto, Tampa, Seattle, and then Baltimore's a game, Cleveland's a game and a half, Chicago's three games, Boston's four and a half. No one in the AL Central. I have a sinking feeling that the other teams are just going to keep elevating themselves over that division and are just going to leave them behind. I'll tell you my 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 three if you want because I I, I listed the three um, in each league mm-hmm. that are going to go ahead get it. <clears throat> so yeah, after my prediction of the Blue Ray, uh, the Blue Jays taking over the Yankees, we got the Yankees first. In the wild card. Then we got Baltimore. And then the Rays. Seattle missing it out again. I, dude, if if Baltimore keeps going, that's that's the piece because the Yankees aren't going to get going to get taken over. Mm -hmm. And the Rays aren't going to get taken over by Seattle. So, there are going to be four teams 
from the friggin' AL East that are getting in there. Sorry, Boston. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. Dave, who do you think? Uh, my one, two, three, I'm going to go with Toronto, Seattle, and Tampa Bay. Know that uh, Seattle is even more starved for a postseason than the Phillies fans are. And they, they're definitely hot at the right time. They're another team that a couple months ago looked like they were just stuck in another season of mediocrity. But I like what they're doing right now. They made some moves. And just like the Phillies, I think this is their uh, season to finally break that streak of not making it to the playoffs. Because they haven't made it since 2001, right? Yeah. When they, won when they had 116 years. wins. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pick Toronto, Seattle, and Baltimore. I feel like Tampa's flying too under the radar. To, like, I just don't feel like they have a big spark this season of, like, they're going to make that big dramatic push at the end of the season. I think Baltimore has all of the goodwill and momentum out of any team. I think Seattle can pick that up. And I just feel like Toronto's talent's going to have to catch up at some point for them to, like, just start really – because I think they're going to pull away with the Mm -hmm. top wild card spot. And then I'll leave the last one to fight between Tampa, Seattle, and Baltimore. I also agree. I don't think any of those AL Central teams are going to make make a difference. Um, the NL, so we got the Braves at four games above the wild card spot. Phillies one game above the wild card spot. San Diego is the last wild card spot. Milwaukee's one game out, and San Francisco's five and a half out. Everybody else is 10 or more. So this one's a lot more, like, delineated. So is Milwaukee or San Francisco going to make the playoffs? I don't think so. I don't think they are either. What do you think, Ethan? I have. I'm going with Mets. Because the Padres are going to shit the bed. They already have, but I, I I don't I don't see them making the playoffs. Like after they just got bent over and then you lose to the Freaking Giants with like the dream team. Apparently, you can't even score a run. Like, there are they, there's that that team is full of a bunch of egomaniacs, dude. <laughs> and they're, and they're gonna all get one more back. like me, me, me. They're not. They're not a cohesive unit. There's a bunch of really talented people on that team, but they have that. Mm-hmm. And then... That's all I have to say about that. So, I guess for... And then Dave and I, I think it's going to be the... It's going to be the teams that are already in the playoffs, I feel like. Now... Let's talk about the trade deadline then. So, who do you think made the who made the best improvement of their team through um, the trade deadline? Dave, you want to go? Like upside? Where you can go? (laughs) No, well, yeah, you can go with Dave. Yeah, that's a tough one because the, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good moves that were made. I'm looking up a few here just to remind myself, and I know like the 
the, the one that got the most attention by far is obviously the Padres. And I, I feel like I want to say that's the best move, even if it doesn't pan out for this season, mm-hmm. because you're still getting Juan Soto for however many years. And, you know, he's considered a generational talent. And they even managed to pick up Josh Bell in that deal, which was another great addition. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> you already get Soto. Yeah, I mean, they pretty they much left to, Washington like, with nothing. <laughs> well, Washington. They gave him Voight. Five. Well, they were supposed to get Eric Hosmer, and then he's like, F that. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> like, I'm not going to Washington. <laughs> um, and then poor Luke Voigt. Can you imagine going from the Yankees to the Padres? And I'll just go to another last place team. Stuck on the Nationals. That's like that was one of my talking points. Like he got the raw end of that deal, dude. And it's all because of Hosmer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Voigt is the biggest loser. Of the trade deadline. <laughs> yes. Because, like, most. No team the- lost that bad. It just Luke Voigt. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, most of those teams that gave up big players got a bunch of prospects. Like, this is a major league talent getting dropped on the worst team in baseball. Like, holy crap. <laughs> Terrible. Mm-hmm. I think on paper. The Padres got the best. And he's not in a hitter-friendly park either. No. Um, but, yeah, I think the Padres on paper got the best outcomes in the um, trade deadline. I don't know how it's going to play out in actuality with the gelling of their team. But I think the Cardinals – Got big with Quintana. I think Quintana was a big pickup for them because they really needed a pitcher. And honestly, oddly, the Phillies, Mm -hmm. they made very subtle moves that made up. But very needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, like, and then it gave them an excuse to trim the fat. Because that was one of my talking points. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Ethan. The uh the marsh, like he's not some hope like a high profile player, but they needed to get rid of that carousel in center field. And with them having him, like you said earlier, they got to get rid of Adubel Herrera. Who is nothing but a liability at this point? Yeah, <laughs> he's good on defense, and the dude can hit, and he he just has like a an energy about him that fits that clubhouse. And they re- they needed to solidify center field. That has been a problem for a handful of years now, and they have somebody. And I think he's locked up for like five years because he was under contract. That's another thing. Like mm-hmm. they have somebody locked up for about like five or so years. And then <laughs> picking up Syndergaard, they're not getting Syndergaard of like DeGrom Syndergaard from the Mets. But this guy, like he's still pushing like top line starter. And they needed another one in there because you never know what you're getting with Eflin because that guy's like, he'll do great and then he'll do really poorly and get hurt. So they needed somebody else in that rotation. And I feel like they got a pretty solid guy, whether like just even if he pitches to like a three, five year or eight while he's with the Phillies. <clears throat> so they had a pretty fundamental no blockbuster moves here but it's a really fundamental thing and I can speak to 
that because it's like I know just when you follow a team as closely, like you can look at a really what seems to be under the radar moves and they picked up people that they did. And I feel like the Orioles did the same thing. I know they got rid of their closer. Um, and they got rid of Trey Mancini, but they got some good prospects that are going to actually fold into like their top 12 prospects in their organization. So they're setting with those moves, they're setting themselves up for years to come now. Like their young talent in, is performing in the major leagues, and they have a bunch of players in the top 100. <clears throat> so they made fundamental moves, nothing blockbuster or anything, but they did what they had to do to solidify their future. So, who do you think? So, instead of saying the biggest loser, who do you think got out of the trade deadline the worst by not doing enough? My quick answer is the whole N- uh, AL Central who didn't do anything and are just going to be trying to itch each other out for the rest of the season. So, that's my answer. How about you? Uh, one, I guess one of the ones that comes to mind for me first was the Brewers. Just by comparison, like, I feel like the Cardinals are doing a lot and the Brewers are like they traded away Hater, which I didn't understand. I know he was going through a really rough July, but mm-hmm. like the guy's got really good stuff. And from what I've heard, like after they traded him, like they had a string of bad games that were because of weakness in the bullpen. And it's it, it's just a bit of a head scratcher for me that, you know, you've been leading the division for this long and you have a, a guy who's so highly coveted like that and you trade him away. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I thought that was really weird too. They Even- literally they traded him for like it was just a closer for a closer. Right. Yeah. With the Padres, wasn't it? Yep. That move was even... overshadowed because of Juan Soto. Yeah, it was but... like that it's <laughs> just And like I don't even One know the most bizarre moves I've seen in a really So strange. But what we're going to do to wrap up this – well, Ethan, who do, who do you think did the least that should have done more? I'm uh, – damn. Was it the NL Central that, like, one of the teams literally did nothing? I guess the Brewers. Well, yeah. Well, <coughs> I feel like they I think there was a t- there was a team that literally did nothing. But but yeah, like I'd have to go with because all the like the top teams like they didn't have to make anything and I don't think any of the other teams really just sat there that were in contention other than the Brewers, where you literally just equal your move out. It's you just swap closers. Move. So when you're you're there and you're competing with the Cardinals and you just you literally just swap closers, what the hell are you doing? It's it's almost like, okay, we're st- we're having a mediocre year. Let's just who c- we don't care at this point. Like that's what that shows me. So I think they definitely lost. 
they're the like the biggest loser um in the majors right now with moves based off of the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. They needed some kind of spark, I feel like, and they didn't get that. Yeah, they them trying to trying to find a template for the new playoff bracket they're using in 2022 because we got six teams now. Let's see. <coughs> That's 2021. 2021. Why do they not have a picture of the bracket anywhere for 2022? I know I've seen it on Instagram. Like, if the season ended now, this is what it looks like. Yeah, I want to try to find that. Should have better prepared. Try, like, um, BSBLR. On Instagram, they might have it or MLB memes. Um, John Boy Media, I think, might have it. And or um, talking baseball. I finally see you guys again. <laughs> there you were both black screens. Of course, we're going to wrap up soon. <laughs> like, that was rough, man. I was like, we we're having really bad weather here. So, like, and it's been like that for the past, like, week and a half to two weeks. So. Yeah, we're, we're getting some stormings here right now. Yeah, it's killing signal. Jane, I found one. I'll put it in the chat. Perfect. You're the man, Dave. Because I'm going to put this together. So it's because it starts with you got the four and five seed mm -hmm. who go on to play the one seed. And then the three and three and six seed go on to play the two seed. Because what we're going to do, we're going to do just quick. So, like, we're not going to go too deep into it, but I because I have the playoff, I have the standings here on MLB.com. Because as the brackets would be as of today, as we're recording on August 9th, because mm -hmm. in the American League, the Yankees have the one seed. Houston has the two seed. Minnesota Twins have the three seed. Toronto Blue Jays uh, have the four seed. Tampa Bay Rays have the five seed. And the Seattle Mariners have the six seed. And then in the National League, the number one seed is the LA Dodgers. Number two seed is the New York Mets. And then number three is St. Louis Cardinals. Number four is the Atlanta Braves. Number five is the Phillies. And number six is, six is the San Diego Padres. So, going through this quick. So, who do we got? Tampa versus Toronto. 
I'd go Toronto. Who you think, Ethan? Tampa. I'm going to say Toronto. Whoever gets the majority is moving on in our little tournament. Here. So, <laughs> okay, so Toronto would move on to face the Yankees. Who do we have, Minnesota Twins or the Seattle Mariners? Mariners. 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 So Mariners would go on to face Houston. So two division. So who – I'll jump over the National League. So we got Atlanta Braves or the Phillies? Phillies. Phillies. I'm going to say the Phillies too. And then they have to face the Dodgers. Um, they, they like playing them in the playoffs, so go Matt Phillies. Stairs, Matt Stairs is going to come out of retirement. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. We got deep Saint, into the deep draw. St. Louis Cardinals versus San Diego Pit Padres. Cardinal. Cardinals. Cardinals. They're facing the Mets. So we got Tampa versus Yankees. Tampa. I'll go Yankees. I am also going the Yankees. I don't feel like Tampa really has, like, a playoff rotation. Like, if I was going to go down into a playoff series, I who's even on their rotation except uh, that McClellan? So. It's fine. The, the, the Yankees either. aren't playing. <laughs> um. <laughs> We got Seattle Mariners versus Houston Astros. Mariners. Astros. I'm also going Astros. Even Although though I'd rather the Mariners. You guys don't like sleepers, do you? <laughs> I, I would also prefer the Mariners to win. We got Phillies versus Dodgers. Phillies. In six. Yeah, now that you mentioned we have that history with them, the Matching up well in the postseason. I'm going to say Phillies. Dodgers are going to choke. <laughs> the Phillies are winning that series. Um, St. Louis and the Mets. St. Louis. Goldschmidt, MVP. Yeah, I think I'll go with the Cardinals, too. I was going to go with the Mets because if they have DeGrom and Scherzer, that's a scary. Big if, buddy. Big that's if. true. If they stay healthy. Yeah. Yankees or Houston. That's just horrible. Why? Uh, Houston. I think Houston, too. I was going to go Yankees, but I don't think that matters at this point because Houston. Uh, Phillies and the Cardinals. Shit. (laughs) They're so close to each other. That's a hard one. (laughs) I feel like... uh, Bryce Harper's going to go straight MVP on that one. and Yeah. Yeah. Dave. I'm going with Phyllis. They did technically win the season series against the Cardinals, too. Well, when they were playing like a shake. <laughs> we have a Houston Phillies World Series. Fucking Phillies. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Unless there's cameras somewhere and trash cans. Well... <laughs> You hear, heard it here, the most biased team of <laughs> baseball analysts here talking on YouTube, two Phillies fans. It's just, it's just <laughs> like the Braves and series. Yankees announcers. <laughs> or Hawk Harrelson for the we White Sox. As, we can't be as bad as the Braves announcers. The worst, and their fans. Every, every pop-up's a home run. But that's a wrap. So what we'll do is our next, I guess our, what we can do is two last ones for the season. We can do one when the season's actually over, regular season, and do a real, like, do a bracket, like, in detail. And that could really just be the episode is doing a playoff bracket. And then what we could do to finish off the season is do some, like, surprises, ups and downs of the season and then give out some awards. Paul Goldschmidt for MVP, 
he deserves it. <laughs> yeah, I think all all the things that all the um, awards that go out should we should vote on because writers shouldn't be voting on it. No, fans should. <laughs> Look at us. We're less biased than the dumbass writers. <laughs> Look, and that's saying something. <laughs> Merrill Kelly for NL Cy Young. <laughs> if I was really going to be biased. Very um, familiar reliever of the year. Because his ass got relieved from his duties. Damn. See, Robertson was a much better upgrade than him. Oh, damn. I forgot about that. And you made yeah. such a big deal about why the hell they get it back. <laughs> I was so I, I'm still like I, I wanted to block it out of my memory because two years in a row that a hole didn't pitch. That's so. very true. One of the most wasted contracts in Phillies history. Robertson threw like how many times? Like maybe six seven. innings. <laughs> yeah, but. That's a wrap here on Wasteland Talks as we talk some baseball. But Dave and Ethan, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Thanks, buddy. Thank all of you out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.